for a breakdown of the statewide amendments on the ballot for this upcoming election, let's go to the Holland Group hotline. You can find them online at askthehollands.com. And we bring in Tampa Bay Times and Miami Herald Bureau reporter Romy Ellenbogen for an explainer. You can find her work if you're in the Tampa Bay area at tampabay.com. And if you're in South Florida at miamiherald.com. Romy, really appreciate it. We'll get to the two big amendments, amendments three and four in a bit. But let's start with Amendment 1, which has to do with school board elections here in Florida. Sure. First, thank you for having me. Uh, Amendment 1 was put on the ballot by the Florida legislature. It was a party line vote. Uh, Legislative Republicans supported it. Legislative Democrats didn't. And what it would do is make school board races partisan. So right now when you're voting on a school board race, you don't have the candidate's party affiliation next to their name. This would change it. Now, these days, it's pretty easy to figure out which school board member belongs to which party. But is there a reason the legislature wants to allow for these elections to become blatantly partisan? Yeah, I mean, I think the supporter, Spencer Roach, um, has said he was the one that sponsored the bill that ultimately led to this being put on the ballot, said it's a way for voters to be able to vet candidates to know what party they belong to. And opponents say that bringing that politics into school board races, even though the politics are already there, you know, just encourages it to be more partisan and more combative. All right. Now let's get to amendment to the right to hunt and fish. So this amendment um, would enshrine the right to hunt and fish in Florida's constitution. Florida law already does say that hunting and fishing is part of the valued cultural heritage of Florida. But putting that language in the constitution would just make it a stronger assurance. Is there anything that's currently threatening that right? There's nothing at the moment, uh, but supporters say that putting this language in the Constitution is a way to protect against possible future challenges that have happened in other states. And those who oppose Amendment 2, what's their argument? Yeah, it's mostly environmental groups who, like Sierra Club Florida, are concerned that putting this language in the Constitution could threaten Florida's wildlife and Florida's animals. We're joined right now by Romy Ellenbogen, a reporter in the Tampa Bay Times and Miami Herald Bureau. We're running through what to know about the statewide amendments on the ballot for this upcoming election. Let's skip Amendments 3 and 4. We'll come back to those I want to get to Amendment 5 here, annual adjustments to the value of certain homestead exemptions. A fun one. Yeah, it's a little confusing, but it essentially means that if you have a homestead tax exemption uh, for your primary residence, you could have an inflation adjustment if this passes. So if it passes, you could get a larger tax break if inflation is up. And what are the arguments both for it and against it? The argument for it is, you know, we're living in... um, A moment in Florida in particular where housing cost is really expensive and the proponents who put it on through the legislature say that this is the public's money and that a $25,000 tax exemption is not what it used to be, you know, a decade plus ago. Um, Opponents like the Florida League of Cities say that when you mess with this tax exemption or increase this tax exemption, it could affect the money that is paid out to first responder services like firefighters, police and other city, you know, city services that are funded by tax dollars. All right. Now let's get to Amendment 6, a repeal of the public campaign financing requirement. Right. So this is a program right now where certain candidates for statewide office, like the governor or the attorney general, can tap into a campaign fund matching program. Um, It gives them public money. They have to agree to certain spending limits and a full audit of their campaign afterwards. Uh, But proponents say, you know, it's a way for campaigns to gain a little bit more equal ground. And opponents say that it's just better spent elsewhere, these few millions of dollars that is allocated to the program. And Romy, now we get to the two big ones, the ones making the most noise. And let's start with Amendment 3, which would legalize the recreational use of marijuana. Yeah, so this would legalize recreational marijuana in Florida. Florida currently has medical marijuana, which means people need a medical card to be able to purchase it. But if Amendment 3 passes, adults who are 21 and older would be able to purchase and use up to three ounces of marijuana without any criminal penalty or civil penalty or medical card needed. Those who are supporting Amendment 3, what are some of the arguments they're making? Yeah, supporters say, you know, that it is past time for uh, people to not face criminal penalty for possessing small amounts of marijuana. 
They say that if this passes and if this is legalized recreationally, there's tax dollars that would benefit police and educators and other public service. Those are the main sort of arguments. And that also it's something that, you know, adults should be able to enjoy uh, as they enjoy alcohol and other substances. And then what about the case against this amendment? What are opponents saying? Yeah, there's, again, multiple arguments against it. Um, one of the governor's primary arguments is that it would lead to a marijuana smell in public that would not be able to be regulated. Um, he argues that that would devalue the quality of life, you know, if people are walking around smelling marijuana. Uh, people have also raised concerns about how it could get to teenagers, though it is an adult use amendment, but how that, you know, expanded access could lead to teenagers accessing marijuana. Um, and concerns about driving while intoxicated increasing. And one thing I want to add on this one, because one of the cases that those against Amendment 3 have been making is that marijuana is going to be everywhere uh, in restaurants and all these different places around the state. But there's already talk of a bill that the legislature could pass that would deal with that in the same way that we deal with smoking at places like restaurants and bars. Right. Senator Joe Gruders, who is a Republican, has said he will file a bill that will ban public smoking. And part of the full amendment text says that nothing in it prohibits the legislature from enacting laws consistent with the amendment. So supporters of the amendment have said, we also don't want it to smell like marijuana in public. You know, that's in the legislature's hands, though. For a breakdown of the statewide amendments on the ballot for this upcoming election, we're joined by Tampa Bay Times and Miami Herald Bureau reporter Romy Ellen Bogan. So, Romy, last one left. Amendment number four, the abortion amendment. So right now, Florida bans most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy. Um, this amendment proposes that no law should be able to prohibit or delay or restrict abortion before viability or when necessary to protect patient health. So it's sort of returning Florida to where we were pre the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, viability is generally estimated to be around 24 weeks of pregnancy. So it would be, you know, far expanded beyond Florida's current ban on most abortions after six weeks. And then some of the questions being raised about this amendment have to do with some of the language included in it, like the patient's health. What does that mean? The patient's health care provider. What does that mean? Also, parental consent parental notification is specified consent isn't in this amendment would that supersede a law that's already on the books here in florida so on the parental consent point the amendment says it does not change the legislature's authority to require parental notification governor desantis and other opponents have argued that you know that notification is really different than consent consent being you know a higher bar um other arguments that opponents have made is that the amendment which is really short doesn't define anything doesn't define health health care provider viability but proponents say that these are terms that are well established in florida law generally and have sort of common sense understandings as well Romy Ellen Bogan, Tampa Bay Times and Miami Herald Bureau reporter with a breakdown of the statewide amendments on the ballot for this upcoming election. You can find her work if you're in the Tampa Bay area at tampabay.com. If you're in South Florida at miamiherald.com. And you can follow her for more at Romy Ellen Bogan on X. Romy, really appreciate you coming on and breaking all of that down for us. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you again for your time.